Here I've got a nice problem that was from the team selection test from Turkey for 2015. So many countries have these team selection tests that help them select teams for international contests. So that's what we've got here. So our goal is to find all natural numbers M and N satisfying the following polynomial equation. So we've got M to the fourth plus two N cubed plus one equals m n cubed plus n. Now before we jump into the solution, I'd like to point out that it might be a nice homework exercise to extend our solutions to all m and n in the integers. Because notice here we're just solving over natural numbers. Okay, so let's maybe get into it. So I'm gonna take this blue boxed equation and rewrite it so it looks like we're finding the roots of a two variable polynomial. So I'll call that two variable polynomial FMN. And so FMN will have the form M minus two times N cubed. So notice we get that from moving this two N cubed over to the right side of the equation. And then after that, we'll have plus N so that'll be from this right here, and then minus m to the fourth minus one equals zero. Now let's look at this polynomial we have, and notice that something special is happening around m equals two. So the behavior when m is bigger than two, and the behavior when m is less than two, is probably different. So we can probably get an idea for what's going on if we look at something around the boundary of that behavior. The boundary of that behavior would be when m equals three. Notice that's gonna be the smallest value of m that will put a co coefficient which is positive in front of n cubed. So let's look at f of three comma n. We'll notice that's gonna be n cubed plus n minus three to the fourth power is 81, so we're gonna have minus 82 because we have that's equal to zero. But now we would really wanna find the zeros of this polynomial if there were solutions attached to n equals three. But notice that this n cubed plus n is gonna grow very, very quickly compared to this constant 82, which is never growing. So it should be pretty easy to find a place where this is always bigger than zero. Okay, well, let's maybe do a couple of test cases. Notice f of three, three, well, that's gonna be 27 plus three, which is 30 minus 82, so that's minus 62, that is negative. Okay, and then f of maybe we could do three, four, so that's gonna be four cubed, that's 64 plus four, that's 68 minus 82, that's negative 14, so that's also negative. <clears throat> but let's see what happens after that. If we have f of three comma five, we'll have five cubed, which is 125 plus five, that's 130 minus 82, that's gonna be something like 48, which is positive. And then it's pretty easy to check that it's always gonna be positive after that. So notice these values are related to n being less than or equal to four, and we have f of three comma n is negative. And then these values in this direction are attached to f bigger than or equal to five, and we'll have f of three comma n is positive. But notice it's never equal to zero. That would happen somewhere in, bet in between these two spots by the intermediate value theorem. But since we're working over natural numbers, we can't use anything in between four and five. So we'll say never equal to zero. Okay. So again, this is just a little bit of exploration. That's why we're not really checking this very, very quickly. But it's pretty clear that this is going to be increasing as a function of n. Okay, well now let's look at the relation between when this goes from being negative to positive. And that seems to happen at this point when n is bigger than or equal to 5. But how is five related to three? It's two more than three. 
So it kind of makes sense to look at f of m comma m plus two, that would be like our three comma three plus two, and hopefully we'll get that this is always positive. And then likewise, this guy right here gives us some motivation that maybe this thing is always negative when we have an m plus one in there. So in other words, we have f m, m plus one is always negative. Obviously we're gonna have to check that, but that's a good first claim. Another thing to keep in mind, this is all built off of this assumption that the coefficient of n cubed is positive. So this is all built off of m being bigger than or equal to three. Okay, so now that we've done a little exploration, let's summarize that at the top of the next board and then we can move, prove maybe like a preparatory lemma. Okay, on the last board, we did some exploration that brought us to the statement of the following lemma, which I've edited a little bit just to save time. And that is for m bigger than or equal to three, we have f of m m is less than zero and f of m m plus two is bigger than zero. But if you work through the case where there's an m plus one in this second entry, you'll see that that is not actually that helpful. So we'll need to move to the m comma m. Okay, so now let's prove each of these and see how each of these are a little bit more helpful than they might seem. So let's maybe start with one, and we'll just do this by direct calculation. So f of m m is equal to m minus two times m cubed plus m minus m to the fourth minus one. But now simplifying this, we see that we get minus two m cubed plus m minus one. The m to the fourth stuff cancels but it's pretty easy to see that this thing is always going to be less than zero. And this is actually for all m bigger than or equal to one, even though we're really just looking at m bigger than or equal to three. That's because this m cubed term will always dominate this m term. It's even got a coefficient of minus two on there. Okay, so we've proven this first part. Now let's see the second part, which we'll use a similar strategy. So we've got f of m comma m plus two. So that's gonna be m minus two times m plus two cubed plus m plus two minus m to the fourth minus one. Okay, so now expanding all of that and then combining things, we'll see that this is equal to four m cubed minus 15m and then minus 15. Okay, great. And then I'll let you guys check, but you can check probably a number of different ways using calculus or some other method that this is going to be bigger than zero for m bigger than or equal to three. But that's the range that we're interested in here. Okay, great. So now I wanna notice that we also have the following fact and that is this is an increasing function if we fix m and vary n. So maybe we could write that as follows. So we've got n less than, n1 less than n2 implies f of m n1 is less than f of m n2. Okay, so now this combined with one and two tells us the following. So if n is less than or equal to m, then f of m n is less than zero. Well, that's because we're replacing this n with m, but that's already in this inequality right here. We're actually just pinning this to the left of what we just got done proving. And then furthermore, if n is bigger than or equal to m plus two, f of m comma n is bigger than zero. So it's always less than zero if n is less than or equal to m. It's always bigger than zero if n is greater than or equal to m. So putting that together, that means that n must be equal to m plus one. Recall that's still in the case when m is bigger than or equal to three. We're gonna have to check the cases when m is one and two on their own at the end. Okay, so let's maybe clean up the board and we'll look at this case. 
OK, so we've done a lot of work, and that ended up showing that if m is bigger than or equal to 3, and this equation is satisfied, then n equals m plus 1. Now let's see if we can use that to find some solutions of this form. So we'll calculate f of m comma m plus one. So that's gonna be m minus two times m plus one cubed plus m plus one minus m to the fourth minus one. Okay, so now expanding all of that out and then combining, we'll see that we get m cubed and then minus 3m squared minus 4m minus 2. So we've got a cubic polynomial, and we wish to find the roots of this cubic polynomial. So how can we do that? Well, probably we want to use something like the rational root test. So the rational root test will find all possible rational roots. Of course, we just want natural number roots, but those will be among the rational roots. Okay, so let's just spell that out. So rational root theorem, we'll say that the possible values of m are plus minus one and plus minus two. That's because it's plus minus the factors of this guy over the factors of this coefficient right here. But that's basic calculation to plug these values of m into this polynomial. And what you'll see is that none of these work. OK, great. So putting this all together, we see that for all values of m bigger than or equal to 3, we have no solutions for m bigger than or equal to 3. So that means what's left to check is when m is equal to 1 or m is equal to 2. Okay, so let's maybe clean this up and then we'll finish it off. So we just got done showing that there are no solutions for m bigger than or equal to 3. So that means we are left to check the following two remaining cases when m is 1 or 2. So let's do those one at a time. So if m equals 1, then we have f of 1 comma n is equal to negative n cubed plus n minus 2 equals 0. So that's what this thing collapses down to if m is equal to 1. But recall, we just used the rational root theorem to show that some sort of cubic polynomial did not have roots over rational numbers, and thus no roots over the natural numbers. And you can do the same thing here. So rational root theorem says no roots. So that means we get no solutions from this part either. And I want to point out that what would we, what would we have to check? We'd have to check plus minus 1 and plus minus 2 again. OK, so now let's look at our last remaining case when m is equal to 2. Before we do that, I want to point out that there's a big hint built into this structure that m equals 2 will give us a solution, or it's our best bet for a solution. And that's the fact that that will cancel out this cubic term right here, and thus leave us with something that's fairly simple to work with. OK, so if we plug m equals 2 up here, we have f of 2 comma n is equal to, well, that'll be 0. And then we'll have n minus, so 2 to the fourth is 16 minus 1 is 17. So we have n minus 17, set that equal to 0, and we see that n is equal to 17. So after all of that work, we finally found a solution. And this is indeed our only solution over natural numbers. So as you recall from the beginning of the video, I said a nice extension might be to solve over the integers. So maybe do that on your own and post what you get in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.